They came to see me, mama. I got these G's in my jeans, mama. I to sleep, mama. She was all a dream, mama. Depper drive growing up. Just another young buck. Coming to the coming kind of Kool Aid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out, to, uh, shout out to shout out to shout out to Mills and the Sense Six O because that's like already that's gonna be our intro. That's gonna be your intro banger. The Sense Six O. That's gonna be our official. That was our ghetto intro. Our ghetto we'll, intro. we'll do a real intro. I gotta do a little edit. All right. So we'll have a uh, the podcast. I think maybe the chorus on like the Seven Six O. We were actually uh, it's funny funny you mentioned the Seven Six O. We were actually filming some stuff. Um, for Mills and the 760 yesterday, so let's talk about that. First of all, this event happened with no plan. I just said, let's do something at the skate park because we've been wanting to make a skate video and we haven't yeah. had time to, to go out there and shoot. So I was like, I'm going to hit up Crummy Clothing. Shout out to Crummy for the shirt and uh, follow Crummy Clothing. They're a skate brand right here in, Cath- in Cathedral City. I had them on the podcast. Thanks to you, you, you introduced me to the skate culture here in the yeah. Valley. So we're like, okay, let's do an event for the kids. Let's go give out some merch. Go give out some skateboards. I don't remember why, but we're like, let's have Mills perform too. Well, yeah, dude, because I was telling you, I'm like, I, I gave them the idea like, hey, we're already, we're already like filming some stuff. Two, it's like there's kids naturally around. So just aside from like the... The indio shots with the low rider and stuff like that like you need more people in yeah. this video so it's like this music video is the 760 and just getting a bunch of like skaters skating down some stuff doing cool tricks like that would just add more to the video so and i feel <laughs> like skating and music videos go together i feel like that's something that that just works well it's like it's either girls twerking or skating. <laughs> we went I, with the, the the less extreme. <laughs> I haven't seen like skating and hip hop or like rap and. No, it, it's not. It's mostly like the grunge era, huh? Like the yeah. bands in the nineties. It's most rock, but Mills has a different style because he's not. He's not a regular rapper. He doesn't rap like. I don't know. He's like he has he's his not, own style. He he has like a mix of like Kendrick and Kanye. He, or he like, tells a story within his like his art. He doesn't. Like he's not trying to be like a persona, like flaunting or flaunting, and not, and not like he tells us how it is, you know. Yeah. But if it's like his emotions, his story, whatever he's trying to come out with, but it's real, you know. It's everything that he talks about in the seven six zero. It's uh, like we were just talking, uh, we were just filming, you know. We were showing him some of the the edits. The video, yeah. and he was telling about like how some girl literally told him like, "Hey, that music video made me." happy just being in the 760 and i think that's what we want to capture that's what we yeah this video we want to capture the valley and as much as we can of course one video we can't capture everything and the next few videos that's what we're going to try to get like use this to our advantage we have a great location with amazing views amazing like historic sites just like i mean the valley is amazing people come here to retire so we'll be showing all that through the through the music videos and then the music by mills like you said storytelling it's it hits different you know that's just dope it hits home too even like the the areas too like all those street signs the the locations yeah well wait till people see the video so the video's coming up soon but um going back to the event so we hit up crummy clothing last week and we're like hey next saturday are you guys available i hit up a couple other skate brands and some other locals but they already had something booked because it was super last minute and for some reason i didn't want to advertise like i was like we got to throw this event like without telling a lot of people because I feel it'll be better this way. Don't plan it out. Don't try to make it perfect. Yeah. And it turned out to be amazing. It turned out better than I expected, to be honest. Really? Yeah. I, I kind of expected a little more. <laughs> oh, you I'm did? Not, I just, I expected a little more, but I think it, it's just we, we came in a little too early because when we came in a little early, I was like, ah, oh, man, like we're probably going to. Like, we should do this, like, later, because we got there, what, like, 6.30? Six, like a 6, yeah. 6, yeah. Um, and usually that's not really a good time, because during this time, it's hot. It's really hot. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, just, um, it's just it being hot. It's not a good combination. Uh, skating in the heat, most skaters, I, I was telling him, like, the golden hour is usually, like, 7, after 7, because that's when the sun goes down. The most when, popular time for skaters to come? yeah. So a lot of skaters, like, you know. Yeah, everybody showed up, night. like, an hour after we were there. They all showed up, and it was cool because you got to see, like, old, oh, they call them OGs, like, older skaters. Like, they were actually pretty good. Like, yeah. some of those dudes were pretty dope. 
And um, yeah, you had all walks, you know, like all kinds of skate levels, you know, some pros, dudes in the bikes doing crazy tricks. And it was really cool because I never, I never really hung out at a skate park before. So that was like my first experience. So we got to shoot the music video. We hit up Justino. We hit up Mills. They said they were down. We then promoted until the day of. Yeah. I didn't want it to, to get too big because I don't know. I've never been to a skate park, so I didn't know this what kind of last rules. Minute. Yeah. So, we, we, yeah, literally, like, Crummy posted it, like, the day of or, like, the day before. I didn't even post it because I wanted it to be just a pop-up show. Yeah. So we ended up having a pop-up show, performance by Mills, a music video shoot, skating event where we gave away skateboards and merch and stickers and all kinds of stuff for the kids so like that's pretty dope yeah just uh just taking you to <laughs> taking you to the store uh we were we were take um we even bought the merchandise too uh we bought the the uh for the giveaway we bought that last minute too <laughs> we bought it 30 minutes before we went to the park <laughs> we're like hey let's go i gotta buy some skateboards real quick yeah and, and i had no clue i never bought a skateboard before in my life so um i was gonna buy like some little kid skinny one and just like no 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 People don't use this shit, bro. Like, yeah, I was one. guiding this dude. I was like, bro, you got to get this, this, and that. And I was just, like, telling him, like, hey, like, you don't get this, get this. I, I was telling him, like, what to get. And, you know, obviously, hopefully, like, it, like it, it played out. You know, it, it went well because everybody that got shit, you know, was happy with it. Yeah. But I just, I know my shit. <laughs> and this, <laughs> this dude never bought a skateboard in his life. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on, but I just, it was fun. It was fun being able to just like do a kind of community event, and this is the first one I've ever done. Yeah, I definitely want to plan the next one out, like you said, at least two, three weeks in advance, get the logistics. But I think we're gonna be doing a lot more because it was super dope, and being able to collaborate with other brands kind of makes it happen too. Because yeah, I think we're all working for together. this, it worked out really well. Um, because maybe if we. You would have thought like maybe if we would have had like other the other brands too like working with us it probably would have been like like more of a letdown because like they might have expected something bigger. Yeah. I think I think you're right with this. It, it it's fine how it is because of just how sm I mean it but was it, big. it was big though. It was big. There was a lot of skaters. Yeah, but it's just probably like you know, different people have different expectations. You know, they might expect like a bigger like, show. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want I didn't want it to be a big show because, like I said, we're gonna have live performances. I don't know if there's gonna be like rules and shit, but it was pretty wild. wild like the wild wild it's a west public park. I mean, <laughs> as long as you're not, we had music and it was cool though. Like I don't know if the, those kids have ever seen a pop up show like that, but um, I know Mills was excited. and We're definitely gonna do more pop up shows with more artists in the future. Yeah. More giveaways and um, this is just the beginning to getting getting in touch with the skating here in the valley. We'll be making a video about that too. Yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. Uh, I'm just gonna take a sip of my lemonade. <laughs> oh, perfect segue. Um, we also made a dope video about this dope coffee uh, coffee place called Six Street Coffee. We made a dope video about it. You should probably check it out if you haven't already. They have good stuff, good coffee, good lemonade. Shout out Sixth Street Coffee. <laughs> Not sponsored, by the way. The unofficial sponsor. So yeah, we're giving a shout out to Sixth Street Coffee for just because we like them. You know, we uh, what is it? Practice what you preach. This guy went to Sixth Street Coffee right before the podcast. We made a video about Sixth Street Coffee, so check it out. It was a pretty good video. It took us a probably like a month to make, but it was like so much going on in that video as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, so much going on. Hollywood producers and everything on there. Yeah, it was dude. cool. It was good. So let's get to the main topics. Yeah. So today, uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, that was our unofficial intro. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about Disney and Disney screwing over a lot of Hollywood, their, actors. Hollywood actors and people suing Disney. We'll talk about people are pissed. <laughs> We're going to talk about the baby. There was some latest news with the baby, uh, some controversies that he got into last week. We'll also talk about some some other stuff about the uh, movie industry, like some stuff that's coming up that you want to watch, like Suicide Squad with John Cena. We have uh, some other wrestling. Speaking of wrestling, we'll do some wrestling stuff. Mm -hmm. CM Punk maybe coming back. What? And then um, <laughs> I hope hope he does like that was needed. And then we'll do an we'll talk about who is the worst kind of influencer and other topics. So that's just a, a little brief brief introduction we're going to be doing so first let's get off with disney so disney right now is being sued by scarlett johansson because of breach of contract so according to 
Scarlett Johansson's um, people, she was going to get a pay cut. She was going to get some kind of revenue based off the ticket sales from the yeah. movie theaters. And Disney, without consulting them or restructuring the deal that they had made, they decided to release the album. I mean, to release the movie <laughs> on Disney Plus and on the movie theater yeah. at the same time. So cutting into her profit, you know, like they didn't give yeah. her any extra revenue. Yeah, that's... uh honestly dude I, it's a contract either way so i hope scarlett johansson gets some sort of money out out the way like she has to get a like some money in there and scarlett johansson isn't the only one too you know uh emma um was it emma stone emma played? stone emma stone they did the same thing uh, with the corella movie and this might affect uh, Scarlett Johansson more because I think she produced. Was she? She's yeah, a she producer in the film. Producer, but it's like film. a lot of people. For me, I think it's messed up for Disney to do. I just restructure the contract. Yeah. And Disney's like an evil company, but we all give it a pass because they make great movies and they they have all the great franchises. Like Disney's pretty fucked up, bro. No, yeah, they're they made. I think we're just stuck on that nostalgia because like what new like i i think i for me i think disney just leans onto the, like their old nostalgic movies and a little just, too like, much a little too much like what new movies uh have they made you know what new franchises have they built you know that haven't been you know already Re established? already established yeah the only thing i could think of was those uh like uh frozen frozen is the only one that's new right frozen franchise like it became so it became like the biggest animated film of all time bro like i don't understand why i think we need more it was so so popular so yeah frozen and they've done like the only original films is like frozen the brave movies um mm -hmm. maybe all the pixar but then even pixar they're recycling the monsters uh, university yeah. finally dory 2 another incredible sequel another toy story i think there's another one coming out like they keep re rehashing the same stuff and then they jump from remaking all their animated films into live action movies and then star wars that like there's there's like 20 star wars movies and then the mcu it's all mcu movies so one thing i, I do want to say about disney in 2019 that's the last year we had a big like big global theater like without yeah. the pandemic so yeah, yeah. they had nine of the top 15 movies the the top 15 movies like top grossing the most earning money yeah um nine of them were disney films out of the 15 what all the studios combined because they had like star wars and yeah, all kinds yeah. of shit. but they had that's why they own so much money and you can't tell them anything because they they literally own all the big franchises avengers super popular with kids and people that just like superheroes just they own marvel in general yeah so they own spider-man they own Avengers. Not Spider-Man 100%. No, no. Not, not Sony owns them. Yeah. Um, they own... Uh, Pixar. Pixar. They own... I mean, the, just those three in general. You have the Pixar, which have, like, the best kids' movies. Then yeah. you have Disney. I mean, uh, Marvel. And then you have Star Wars, bro. Like, the three biggest franchises right there. That's all they needed. And they own all the theme parks. And everybody just, everybody just loves their brand because they've been around for so long. But... The the last five years they kind of sold their, nah, I don't want to say they sold to China, but they definitely cater to the Chinese market because that's where the, they make their most money. So, oh yeah, it's been kind of shady over the last few. I years. I mean, that's the whole Mulan movie was all controlled by, you know, how the Chinese want the representation. They didn't like. I I haven't seen the film, but just learn. Uh, oh, you never saw it. I knew it was going to be a flop. I, <laughs> I knew it was going to be a flop. It was going to be a waste of time. One, because I, Aladdin one was kind of a flop. Um, I, I learned not to have high expectations for live uh, action, live films. action films it, like that. It was stupid. They took out the mat. So it, that movie made no sense. Like Mulan sucked because one, they took out the dragon. Mm -hmm. So there was no, because they, they didn't want magic. They wanted it to be more realistic, but then they threw in like this witch who was like flying and shit and like doing all this magical stuff. So you literally could have had the dragon, which is, or Mushu or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah. The most popular person in the whole, in the whole like 1990s movie. So they kind of dropped the ball on that one. And then, I don't know, Disney just, I, I kind of stopped watching Disney films. I haven't watched any animated film in a while. Um, I definitely like the Avengers and all that. But even those, I don't like the way it's like going now. 
it's it's too it's too like played out i think it's I, pl- we just need something fresh to me when i think i just i don't like anything that because when i think about disney i think about just stuff that has been played out too much like and they make the same movie over and over again. over and over again every every cartoon film is the same the avengers even every avengers movie is the same bro like it's just a generic villain a, a disposable army and the same jokes like it, it's just so played out and and it was only cool because we invested so much time it was cool while it lasted but i think now we just need something new something fresh like when the yeah. avengers first came out it was cool it was fresh it was new and we've never seen team up movies well right now we're we have um speaking of disney and like new stuff we have a uh, suicide squad number two coming out directed by james gunn mm-hmm. who was previously working for disney yeah he got fired after doing guardians of the galaxy one and guardians of the galaxy two he was signed up to do Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but they found out some old tweets from from like 10 years ago where he used to have a parody account. So he used to be a comedian, okay, an internet comedian. He he tweeted out some stuff that was controversial. And then Disney- 10 years ago. 10-year-old tweets, bro. But when he was a comedian, like he didn't really mean those things, you know? And uh, even if he did, it's 10 years ago. Like shit happens, you know? Like uh, people- that's, that's crazy. So that's... they Disney fired him after the two successful Guardians of the Galaxy I films. hope- guardians of the galaxy 3 like falls like just plummets in sales box office sales just because of that because i mean that's stupid that's a stupid reason well actually no he got so he actually won this whole scenario he got rehired by disney so he got fired from doing number three he got hired by dc which is like the competition for marvel Mm -hmm. and um he's doing suicide squad 2 which right now has like 90 plus percent on rotten tomatoes so the the critics love this film. It comes out next weekend, actually. Um, I would definitely be watching Suicide Squad. It has John Cena in it. Has John Cena? It. Yeah. You can't see him. Harley Quinn and uh, Idris Elba's in it, too. And the shark. The shark villain. The shark villain. What's his name? Like the DC character that's like a shark? Uh, let's look him up. Damn, bro. I don't remember his name. The shark. It's like a shark. He's popular. <laughs> shark DC character. Is that a good way to search it up? <laughs> King Shark. King Shark. King Shark's gonna be in it, and I I know him from the video games because the vi- have you ever played like those uh, those DC Injustice or whatever? No, it's kind of like the Mortal Kombat games. I, no, just- I played the first one. I just haven't played the uh, the the recent one, the second one. Yeah, those. I'm I'm not I'm not pretty I'm not good at those games. Not like fighting at- games, I'm I'm more uh, like FIFA or Madden. Two <laughs> K back in the day, I don't play two K. Yeah. No, but I, yeah, yeah. Like that King Shark. He's going to be in it. And um, yeah, so James Gunn, he got rehired after all these positive reviews. He got rehired by Disney to do Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which uh, he ended up winning. You got another franchise to to uh, to his name, you know, Suicide Squad. He kind of saved it. Yeah. I mean, the first one didn't do too well because of all the criti- uh, all the, yeah. the I mean, the movie, the pace. I didn't like the pacing in that movie because it went back and forth between like there were some parts where like a lot of people were invested because like the new joker and all that stuff mm-hmm. like that's and there wasn't enough joker in that there movie. wasn't enough joker exactly but even then just the, the portrayal of the joker was just weird I mean, it was weird it was different i like jared leto too and oh jared leto's uh also coming out in a movie the was it gambit or queen's gambit what the fuck is it called gambit no <laughs> he's coming out in a movie um jared leto house of gucci house of Go- gucci yeah he's coming out of a movie called house of gucci and this movie looks insane i don't even know what it's about but I like think i've seen the, the, the makeup and the previews look crazy bro so yeah um i jerry leto is one of the most underrated actors like nobody really I talks think about so him. what was that one movie he did with tom cruise or psycho was it american psycho american psycho i thought that was a good i mean that was a yeah movie. have you seen lord of war lord of war no Lord of War was a movie with uh, Nicolas Cage. So Nicolas Cage was a star, and mm-hmm. he played this this guy named like Yusef or something, some Russian dude. Yeah. So it was really cool. Like Lord of War is an underrated film. It came out maybe like two thousand five. No one talks about it as much, but it, it the thing I took about this movie is this guy who started selling um, AK forty sevens. So he was a big smuggler of AK forty sevens all over the world. Gun, gun Be- runner, right? Gun, gun yeah. smuggling. Mm-hmm. So. I didn't know this, which makes perfect sense, but why AK-47 is banned, like, everywhere, and it's one of the most um, 
utilize weapons by like terrorists or like cartels and all these people because the russians they had ak-47s yeah. and since they were the soviet union they had a bunch of bases all over like eastern and central europe or, yeah. um they had just like warehouses and military bases like full of ak-47s and once the soviet union collapsed and all those countries like they went into like their own independence and wars in the 90s like trying to like create the gun their own countries was just easy, so the guns accessible. were just like literally empty they were just there so yeah. people just like started reselling them on the black market and that's yeah. what this movie was about oh, so lord okay. of war this was selling like guns to like africa to like warlords and shit that would kill a bunch of people yeah. he would just smuggle like ak-47s everywhere because he had like connects to like someone over there like in russia or something so like yeah. that's what the movie's about and then jared leto played his brother oh wow yeah so that's where i like first learned about jared leto and of course he has the the band 30 seconds to mars yeah, yeah. on the side that's like his site so i don't know if the band is his primary i think the band is so he's a full-time artist like he's performing all over the world he has like a cult um cult. I mean, the cult of jared leto you've never seen the the, nah. the pictures bro like this dude's he's literally a cult leader bro he has like um that's weird he's a cult leader he's a cult leader but <laughs> uh not really a cult leader but so is he is he a cult leader yes or no i mean so he may he makes a once a year he makes a trip to an island he looks like jesus bro he might be a cult leader no he does look like jesus he looks like Mary manson so look at this picture right here so they're wearing all white look at that that's on an island resort oh, the cult the of jerry leto so this is interesting i watched the whole video about it so jerry leto he he takes like his most dedicated fans for a like like a retreat or something yeah retreat so he rented out on an island the island i forgot what he called the island but he literally like rented out an island he sold tickets for his like most devoted fans they all went out there and he was gonna perform over two days and just hang out do yoga exercise like but with the 30 seconds to mars band and jerry leto and people are paying like 1500 bucks or more to to get a ticket and go hang out with them that's that's crazy so on that picture with the white and him looking like Jesus, he told everybody to to dress that day like that just uh, so they could do a publicity stunt. So this guy's like a genius marketing guy. Yeah. So he knew that people were going to take this photo and then blast it all over the internet. Yeah. And that's actually what happened. So ah. they took this picture and then people were like, what the fuck? He started a cult. But the whole time, like, all, no, no one ever complained. There was never yet any issues at the island. Yeah. yeah. But he made it like... Um, he made it look like nah, a cult. Nah, he knew for he marketing, yeah. just for marketing because people Publicity, overreact. Yeah. But look at the shit like they're like in the. Look at this. They're all wearing white. Like they're that definitely does white. look like a cult. <laughs> it's a cult. Have yeah. you ever listened to Thirty Seconds to Mars? Yeah, I've listened to. Uh, I used to play Guitar Hero. Um, one of their songs came. I I forgot the song. King and Queen, Kings and so. Queen. Yeah, yeah. I think it was either that. Um, it was one of the, it was one of the songs in Guitar Hero. I, I, yeah, I, I remember the band was Thirty Seconds to Mars, but yeah, that one of the great, one of a good band. Like, it's of, it's a, it's a decent band. Like, it's one of my favorites just because uh, they have like Kings and Queens. That song you're talking yeah. about. Um, I used to watch one time, bro. I don't know why this song. I just became obsessed with the song. There was um, 2010, 2011. I used to play a lot of Call of Duty. I told you Modern Warfare yeah, 2. Yeah. Like I was, I used to play like fucking 30, 40 hours a week, bro. I was obsessed <laughs> and I was pretty decent. I should have start. I should have done gaming instead of doing podcasts, bro. <laughs> instead of doing a YouTube channel, I should have been a gamer. Anyway, um, this YouTuber, he made a compilation, like a sniping video. Like, yeah, you know, people used to make like highlights yeah, yeah, of like yeah. badass snipe trick shots, shots, trick yeah. shots. Mm -hmm. This dude made it with that song Kings and Queen. Oh, and he okay. did it like, cause the intro is pretty slow. And it was like in slow motion and he jumped off the roof and then like when the beat dropped like poof, he sniped somebody yeah. and the whole freaking video was amazing like i just fell in love with that video and that song and i was obsessed like damn that song's bad like and every time i, I listen to that song i just think of call of duty call of duty because of, so of the trick shot montage because of the trick shot yeah, montage yeah. so it brings me back and i just became obsessed but then the, they actually make so that song led me to listen to that album yeah and um then i just became a fan of 30 seconds to mars yeah for sure i mean they, like music and gaming just they just go hand in hand because i mean like a big part like um what was that song paint it black in black ops 3 like whenever i hear yeah. paint it black it's like i automatically go back to like black ops 3 just because it's it 
you know it just goes well dude black ops 3 was it what, what is your favorite call of duty you have you played most of the call of duties yeah i played most of them what's uh, your favorite call of duty man the one that started it all for me uh it was mw2 but i'm gonna lie i'm not gonna lie uh i was too early like i was too young to um enjoy mw2 so yeah. my favorite has to be black ops 3 because i got just because like it was so fun it was fun for me and i really got into it probably played like 30 40 probably 50 hours <laughs> while well, i was in middle school so yeah I, I had the time um that that game was amazing black ops 3 was so good i think the first black ops was great because the first black ops followed modern warfare 2 so my favorite game of all time is modern warfare 2 yeah um i was in high school during that time like it was just the best bro like it was just, the best time yeah like i just had the best time uh the, the lobbies the lobbies were <laughs> insane people just talk smack and people didn't quit the one thing i like about those old call of duties you people stayed in the lobby even when you were getting wrecked like yeah here like you start killing somebody and then they quit and then like yeah. there's nobody playing like it's so annoying bro Back in the day, no, like people stayed. They stayed, or if you were getting kill streaks, people would stay to fuck up your kill streaks. Yeah, people didn't care about their KD as much. It was it was like pride, you know. Yeah, and um, yeah, the lobbies that were insane, and all the guns were so overpowered, so anybody could pick up any gun and just start dominating anything. Secondaries, people used to get nukes with fucking knives. There was a dude. Uh, I don't know if he still does YouTube videos. His name was like Only Use Me Blade only use me blade so he would only kill people with like with throwing the, knives throwing or stabbing knives. people and yeah. shit and like he'll run like ninja and like cold-blooded and like he'll hide behind like fucking and like follow people and just stab yeah. them like that dude like he made a video where he got a nuke just stabbing people just stabbing people like wow. super insane like gameplay like that because you could dominate call of duty like that yeah, yeah. now they make all the guns so nerfed and they're just like they're too trying much to bullshit. like kind of because back then and, and that's another thing too that are uh that i noticed about the older call of duties is just it's just run and gun like that's literally what call of duty was now mm -hmm. it's more like you gotta play them a little more tactical you gotta you know do this do a uh, head glitch you know whatever you gotta pre-aim whatever uh certain guns don't work in certain ranges yeah so, something like that but older call of duties it's just more of like you could just pick it up have like, a good time yeah you pick up the gun and you shoot people and then you kill them. Now it's like everyone's got crazy health. Like back then, you throw three, four bullets, they're dead. Yeah. Now it's like you unload half the clip and they turn around and they kill you, bro. And it's like that's not realistic. And I guess it's for people that are camping. It was against campers because people were complaining that people just sit in a spot. They just start wrecking yeah. you from a corner. But I don't know. I feel like that camping and noob tubing because a lot of complaints were for noob tubing. And I think. It's just part of the game, bro. Like let let the players just dominate with whatever gun they want. Like that's the way like, game should be. Just took it a little too seriously than it had to be. Mm -hmm. But then again, if we would have not had those changes, we probably would have never gotten like the growth of like esports, like Call of Duty, like the cold Call of Duty League, whatever. Yeah, oh this huge. Call of Duty's like I think still the one of the biggest games. Just people just know the franchise. Even if they don't play daily, but People just love Call of Duty. The yeah, every bro. It's, yeah. It's crazy. Just the pros. And I have an appreciation, actually, because, like, I actually, when I got into, like, because I thought I was going to be pro when I played Black Ops 3, because I used to play the shit out of it. So I would be like, oh, I think I have a chance of. So then I got into, like, this wormhole um, of, like, just how to become a pro. And I started, like, looking into, like, all these, you know, Crim 6. Then I started looking into FaZe Clan. That's how I got into the whole, like, I just started getting into, like, like just the uh, introduction of, like, yeah. like esports and stuff like that. And I was just, like, looking, like, dude, people actually, like, fly out to all these different game tournaments. They have their own controller and cases and stuff like that. It's crazy. It's just, like, people, like, fill, like, fill in these convention centers, go to tournaments, win all, like, insane amount of money just playing a video game. But it's like they spend hours, dude. They even stream, but um, they stream for hours too. But they, but if they're like signed to an organization, they can't uh, film their practices. Only like public matches. Yeah, yeah. Um, I follow this streamer Shroud. He used to be like big into CS:GO. Oh, that's Shroud is fucking bad, that, that's bro. A, that's I know a different, that is. That's a different game. But um, yeah, dude. When you you. yeah, I just have an appreciation for just esports in general. It's gonna be for sure. It's gonna be one of the leading. Uh, big market when when it becomes big they're saying it's going to be the biggest sport in the world like i could see that e I could see well esports in general they get more viewers than like s 
some of the biggest like sporting events now i think even more viewers than like super bowl and shit some of them because it's it's global it's global and one it's like either way like it, you may not be good but if you like the game like i don't i don't understand league of legends i really don't mm -hmm. but i know there's a big following to it like but I, I i can appreciate like if you you may not be good at the game like i may not be good at league of legends but i could like watch this dude it's just like it's like you're not good at a sport you like football you're not good at football right but it's like you see somebody that's good and you like you, you, you like, appreciate you it you appreciate yeah. it because you, you know how it hard too. it is yeah you know? no that's true that's what it is um i don't know do you think you have to have a certain talent to become a pro or you just have to put in an insanely amount of hours? I think it's just it's just the amount the amount of time you put in because you got to like study how the game works, um, the routes, the routes, the best routes. You got to like think strategically because that's one of the things that I learned. Like back then, I would just play, just like whatever, right? Just oh, just mess around and whatever. But after like I started like I, I actually researching wanna, like, researching. It's like people actually play strategic strategically like they know when they're about to like run out of an ammo clip and stuff like that so they start like throwing tacticals and to reload and to shit. reload and I, I know for sure when i was taking call of duty more serious i never tried um doing anything like professionally or go to yeah. tournaments but um every time i play I, I i try to be number one in the lobby for sure oh, yeah so i i definitely i always like go around the map i never i always go like a through buildings where like your one side is against the wall so you know they're not coming from this side yeah, so yeah. you're kind of protecting your backside and then definitely like no or use your teammates as bait mm -hmm. like I'll, I'll sometimes i trail some teammate with mine i let them go first see if they kill him then i kill come in and go for the, yeah. the kill and i do all kinds of shit like that that i just been doing for the years like just playing online we used to do um demolition bro in modern warfare 2 Ooh, demolition demolition games because you have the same yeah, spawn bro so the same spawn for one whole round so we would come in start killing them yeah. get our first kill streaks and then we start pushing forward and then we would like you create a barrier yeah. on like certain spots and you know where they're gonna spawn they only spawn from like three or four yeah. different places we would just get rpd an rpd with like an extended mag and and then stopping power and you, you, sometimes at favela the map favela you just literally clamp down mm -hmm. already aiming where they're gonna pop up and you're just yeah. holding the trigger and then <laughs> they just be spawning and they're just dying they're, just dying. they're dying they're, they die and you try to throw a grenade or something yeah and then um once you got like a chopper gun or an ac-130 it's over bro. people are just dropping bombs right on the spawn and then people like sometimes you'll get like six people spawn boom a six kill a five kill people get nukes all the time um one time this dude that played with us bro his name was world's finest there was a dude we never knew him he was from texas so yeah, yeah. we had a whole team of like six people with us and we would merc every lobby we went into we would just destroy everybody and then this dude was in a, a lobby against us yeah, yeah we won but this dude had like 86 kills against us bro what? he had like 80 kills and like 50 deaths like this dude was fucking on his own just fucking keeping up with us and we're like dude this was fucking yeah, good yeah, yeah. so we messaged them after like bro you're fucking bad like you want to like play with us and he's like yeah i'll play with you guys so he joined our clan yeah and then he, he was fucking good bro like he's probably the best player like that i played with like that uh -huh. um this was like 10 years ago so i don't yeah. know what happened to that fool. <laughs> and then this fool in one game he got three nukes bro what three nukes in one game he never used them so he used the first one he got the first one 25 and 0 then he died or he might he kill himself he got another fucking like 50 and one he killed himself and then he got he got like 90 kills like three different nukes yeah. in one game with ac 130s and shit like that fool was bad that's like the best player i've ever played with that's crazy i don't know man i played too many games to to remember honestly for me i was just always conscious about my kd like, yeah like you like i always had that that uh that demean like that i always had my kd because i always wanted to be number one i was always like even when i was playing black ops 3 i was like always I, I think i i feel like i looked at my kd because you know on the ps4 you could just tap your um you could just tap on the trackpad or whatever yeah like, to see to what see the like score your KD, is your score i think i got to the point where i started looking at the leaderboard like popping it up then i reload the gun yeah it was because like every five every five like every five seconds i would just check even if like i was just running around the map i was like what the heck 
Like, well, I'm 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 conscious of my KD too. At certain points, like, first I like to win games, but I hate losing. <laughs> like, I'll try to win, and then um, if I see that I have teammates that are trying hard, like I'll, I'll try to dominate. Like, it depends what it is, you know, the different game types. Yeah, but. I definitely try to play for KD as well, but not a hundred. I'm like seventy percent playing for uh, winning, thirty percent for KD. So I'm not just fucking running in and trying to capture every flag and dying every second. You know, oh, yeah. I try to be more conservative. Like I'll I'll throw smoke bombs. I I love using smoke. Oh yeah. I'll throw smoke and then try to like get flags and then I like to fucking defend the flags. Yeah, That's yeah. where you get your kill streaks because you get the, the the extra points for killing people trying to get yeah. that shit. For me, I was just I, I grinded a lot through a lot of challenges. So for me, I was just trying to get like a lot of headshots. Headshots with the guns, Headshots, getting camo on the right, uh, getting the golden camo. Um, Do you get everything in Black Ops Three? Cause uh, Black Ops Three, I'm pretty sure I definitely got all the prestiges, and um, I got some gold guns, but I didn't get all of them. I didn't get, I didn't get, um, I didn't get to master prestige. I didn't, but I did manage to get most of the gold guns. I think I missed like some of the melee weapons, mm -hmm. but. I some never. of the recent um the recent call of duties i never pressed i just stayed at one prestige yeah just to get all the weapons and i didn't want to keep prestiging because i didn't play as much so yeah um i guess since youtube because instead of making youtube videos i would have been playing video games so yeah. that's what i all my time that i used to invest into playing video games i started making videos so videography youtube um things like that so I never really i still play video games but not as much as i not used to much yeah which i, I could still i still can i just can. i just choose not to uh invest my time well, there. i mean you could always like youtube and gaming go hand in hand i mean you could make you could be gaming and making youtube video at the same time so that's true i know i don't i don't know i never did that bro i i, I thought i was doing a series it was 2016 i kind of dropped the ball i should have done it so i was already doing youtube and i used to work at a gas station yeah, yeah. so on like when it was a slow time i could take the ps4 and connect it to the tv what? right there bro i used to play <laughs> <laughs> what? i gotta find some foot i don't know how footage but Dang. i used to play call of duty at, at as a like at the gas station bro yeah so it was a, it was a one-stop shop so it was like it's not a a and pm or anything yeah. so it wasn't super busy so certain times I, i'll connect the game and i'll be playing and then a customer come in buy something i ring them up and i'm, <laughs> I'm playing i had the, the ps4 controller right there bro and i'll be <laughs> It was during um Advanced Warfare. Oh, okay. So 2015 or something. Yeah, shit. 2015. Yeah, it was Advanced Warfare, so it was a little bit different. Um, I used to like that, the like um the little ball that used to shoot rockets into people uh -huh. that kill streak. Yeah, I forgot what it was called, but that one was dope. So anyway, like I thought I was doing gaming, like me playing at a gas station. <laughs> like, that would have been fucking cool, bro. Like it's, that would have been, been funny. It would have been funny, and then I had fucking homeless people right there. I'm like, hey, bro, chill. I'm trying to fucking get this kill streak. <laughs> He's like, like, hey, what you saying? Like, <laughs> that would have been a funny like thought. Just like, all oh, like, I'm just trying to pay for my gas, and then you just see like gunshot. You just hear gunshots. Like, whoa, what the heck? What's going on? What's going on? Duh, sometimes I would get into some crazy kill streaks, and I'm like, fuck, this customer is here. Now I have to like duck down behind like a fucking wall and shit, and then ring them up while uh, that shit's happening. But those that, that shit was fun. That's crazy. Were you like in a tiny room? Or anything like that like when you were like playing or no it was just right there so i had the register uh -huh. so it's like a register thing right here where i ring people up and then next to it was like the counter where people put things to like pay and then to the right of the register i had a, a screen so oh, i had a, okay. a monitor oh so you were like all right there right like yeah so i was in the same spot so i literally could play on this screen and on this one i ring people up Bag their shit. Oh, okay. And then, oh, they're putting gas? All right, cool. Uh, and I used to play Call of Duty, bro. <laughs> <laughs> playing Call of Duty in a gas was, station. Yeah, playing Call of Duty at work. So it was, uh, yeah, the one-stop shop. Fucking, um, that's, that shit was good times, bro. Good times. <laughs> and then also that's when the uh, Modern Warfare, or Black Ops 3 came out. Yeah. When I was working there. So then I was already playing, then I got back into it. Yeah, dude. Uh, I was telling you, uh, I was telling you, you well, Ricky mentioned it. He was like the one of the funnest like Call of Duties was uh, World War Two, um, back yeah. in twenty seventeen eighteen. Yeah, but that Call of Duty was fun. I remember that. I went to the release the day of the release of that game because mm -hmm. <laughs> I was into Black Ops Three. Because after Black Ops Three, that game came out. I believe no, 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 no. After, no, it was no, no, it was Infinite Warfare, and then after that, after that one flopped, then I got to um, Modern War then World War Two. Uh, cause like it was something new, 
um i saw the game like zombies was a big uh was big on it uh but i i liked because it was different and also like sledge like i liked the feel of advanced warfare it was like the same developers from the advanced warfare game yeah they were making that game so i was like oh uh so me and my homies my my friend uh, javi and my friend noel i took them to like the midnight <laughs> it wasn't mid was it midnight it, it was midnight midnight, midnight premieres really, yeah those midnight. were dope I, I used to go to those all the time we went to the line at gamestop here by the food for less and um we were just waiting i got posters i that's why i wanted to go is because like the posters like i've never been to one so mm -hmm. that was like my first experience and after that i was a sp i went to spider-man um to the spider-man ps4 release but um this release I, I just got posters i did it for the posters because i wanted like cool shit on my wall yeah and i did all that shit i got cool stuff i got pins uh and then i got um they were giving away like some stuff and i got that i got other stuff too like goodies and then i got the game and yeah, it was cool and then i i couldn't play it because i i had to wait for the download and i had school the next day so i was like oh, damn man. that sucks but not every time the Duty came out i, I pull it all night bro even when i was in school get the game and then do the stupid three-hour download and then play and then that shit sucked because um that's what st i started getting it digitally because it was the same thing like you go to the store you gotta wait till midnight or sometimes 9 p.m. because yeah. of the yeah. the three-hour difference. We're in the West Coast. Yeah. You get the game, but then you have to go home and download the, the fucking software. So the people online, by the time you get home and do all this, the people who got the uh, digital, digital game, they were already, like, ranking ahead of you and getting all the better yeah. shit. So it was always, like, trying to be the one of the first. You're always trying to be one of the first. I don't know, though. Like, even though, like, things are going digitally, I always have a – I always appeal to more – Physical. To more physical. Because, like, even though it – it's more, um, how would you say? It? It's more convenient to go the digital route, but it's just something, just connecting, like being in the line, talking to people, like, like I, I can't, I can't tell you, like the many, community, the, the community, yeah. Like I was having like so many conversations, not not only with my friends, but also like people in the line. We were just talking about Call of Duty, like, oh yeah, dude. And we we should throw a, you know what? We're doing pop up events. We should do a, like a, a video game tournament, bro. Like a land, like a land. Yeah, just like give up prices, collaborate with like the food park. <laughs> do like, would you guys be interested? Let me know in the comments. Like Call of Duty or Madden or FIFA. Well, I know you talked about earlier. We want to be playing FIFA at the end of the podcast, and we'll, we'll play each other. Whoever wins is like the champion for the week, and then yeah. you know what I mean. Like we should do something like that, but we should throw a pop up event, gaming with prices. Like winner wins like four hundred bucks or something. Get. <sighs> talk to sponsors to help us like pay for that like that should get popping bro there's no tournaments here in the valley like yeah. why isn't there i don't know well it's just it's never been explored or like people i mean a lot of the people that have money are older so they just they're not, they're not with into the that. times i think I, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna look into that bro that's like, my next goal we're throwing a fucking video game tournament with prices bro with this, cash prices with yeah that that if we have like anything like 2k that shit would blow up FIFA. FIFA is probably the best one for you in the Valley. I feel like there's probably. so many fucking bices and shit. <laughs> <Bice>. <laughs> a lot of soccer fans. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of crazy soccer fans. I mean, you don't have to be Mexican to be a soccer fan, so. I know. It's just a joke, bro. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people are like England fans, German fans. I mean, you name it, bro. Yeah, there's a, here in the valley. There's actually a lot of soccer fans because there's like a soccer community. There's a big soccer community. There's uh, yeah. there's a lot of Sunday leagues here, and um, I feel like FIFA would be great. Madden, Madden's coming out because the new Madden's coming out. Yeah, I feel like the the new Madden will get a lot of people. Madden, two K, two K for sure. Everybody sure. loves two K. I know so many people. Or uh, for for sure, Mills and Justine. Bro, I I hear everybody like say the same shit. Oh, I'm good at 2K, bro. For real, I'm I'm beast at 2K. Everybody says they're the best, but for sure, we gotta be like, we gotta market this right. Like, you really want to be the best? We we gotta like, if you're actually the best, come to this come to this tournament. Well, it's one is to prove who's the best, and two to win money and to throw a community event. Yeah. That that will get the food park popping because remember, like we said, summer's a little slow. Yeah. Having a freaking mad uh, gaming tournaments like 
Dude, like a well organized gaming tournament, we just have to get like um, some screens, some game uh, consoles. Yeah. Get the games, get some controllers, get some referees. We gotta get moderators we, too, like people. Oh, for sure. People moderating the like who wins. And well, that that would be our job, I think. Unless you want to compete in it, trying to prove that you're you're. Well, you're. I mean, I would have to like spend like a good good amount of time. I mean, I mean, if we play FIFA, you're gonna get that smoke from me. So Ooh, you know what I mean. It, know, it'll be easy, easy pickings for me. Don't don't mess with me in PSG, bro. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> don't mess with me. PSG, I'll I'll beat you with. Uh, I was gonna say Madrid, but Madrid. I, I'll I'll beat you with Madrid, bro, all day. Easy, easy money. They don't have Cristiano, Cristiano, man. It's alright. I still got Benzema. I got Tony Kroos. I got the midfield. That's what I need. D- dominate the midfield. I got Ramos to break your players' legs, bro. That's all I need. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll do it for sure. Just bring that PS4. <clears throat> just bring that ps4 yeah i'll bring the ps4 next week we'll be playing a game right after the podcast we'll play i'll, I'll throw the clip at the end of the game that, i think that'd be cool we do that every every time yeah, yeah every time we do an episode yeah um one thing i wanted to ask you is uh i don't know what we we went on a, a tangent on video games but what is like the worst kind of influencer so that's a broad question but like i'll give you my example and i'll let you think of an answer because i oh my god i follow like three or four of these people mm-hmm. And I don't hate the hustle. Like, I get it. People got to get the money. Yeah, yeah, But the worst kind of influencer is those people that, that post, like, they're successful. Mm-hmm. And they're, like, they wear, like, suits and they drive nice cars. And they're always, like, posting, every, like, daily motivational videos. Yeah, yeah. And the whole time they're trying to uh, make you buy, like, life insurance or recruit you into their freaking, uh, their pyramid scheme. So, for example. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, they'll be like, oh, yeah, you could be successful, money this. And they were they take pictures like high quality pictures with like freaking suits, yeah. and all it is is like life insurance. They're trying to s- get you on their program or to become like um, part of them. For so you start selling life insurance and you're getting commission and you get a lot of money. Like that's the the worst kind of influence. That's bro. that's funny that you talked about. You mentioned pyramid schemes. I actually got a story before. Um, this was <laughs> that's funny when I was in Mexico like in April. Um, I actually got hit up by a guy, right, who was, like, an influencer, like, an Instagram inf- influencer, had a good following. Everything that you just described yeah. was, that's literally him. He worked for Herbalife. Okay, um, yeah. Her- Herbalife. And uh, I posted, like, a Kobe picture. I have the book, right? I posted a picture, used a bunch of hashtags, and then all of a sudden I got a DM, and this dude was trying to recruit me, like, to work for him. But then I did, like, I was like, wait. He's trying to recruit me, trying to like do this. He was like, "Oh, I got this amazing opportunity for you." And then I like he told me that like he worked for the company. I'm not going to say mm-hmm. the name cuz Yeah, whatever. don't put him on blast. Um but I did a little research and it ended up being a pyramid scheme. <laughs> and I'm like, "Hey man, like I was like um I was like I told him like straight up like, "Hey bro, I got another opportunity. I'm good." uh have a good day and that's the last time i ever spoken to him but i've seen multiple people like that multiple influencers like that it's just crazy and i keep getting hit up by like people yeah like dms that. all the time as soon as i graduated bro i kept getting like mail too by this other company it's actually like this local company that sells like knives or something like that oh yeah and i posted it on my story i'm like hey if you guys get received like any uh letters from this company don't do it they're a pyramid scheme because like i I'm always conscious, bro. It's like whenever you sign something, yeah, you gotta be conscious because there's um those pyramid schemes are crazy. There's one where it's like coffee, there's knives, there's other ones like Herbalife, the insurance ones, and that's all it is. Is they just trying to recruit you? You pay like two hundred bucks to join the program, and then now you gotta recruit people to pay two hundred bucks, and you get commission. That's crazy. It's dude. so stupid, bro. Like, it make- but it works though it, to a certain extent. There's people that do that. And they somehow, I don't know if they're actually successful. I don't know what the percentage of actual successful people. But, man, it's just like, come on, bro. Like, that's I, that's the people I hate on Instagram. That kind of influencer. That's what it's like. The thing I hate the most. There's also those dudes that, similar to those that do Forex trading. Like, oh, sign up to my course and you'll make $5,000 trading yeah. for the Forex or crypto now. There's a lot of crypto scammers. There's all kinds of stuff on the internet. But that's like the worst kind for me. Yeah, uh, for me, it's just, it's just like, for me, it was like those, uh, 
influencers like uh supreme patty i remember he was like oh click the link to like buy my necklace and he would um i don't know if you remember who supreme patty was but is it the one that was like like some white dude that would do crazy like yeah. pranks and shit yeah, yeah he had this necklace like that was like diamond encrusted or something like that with a shrimp and mm -hmm. like he like told like his fans he made a deal with some like basically he was selling his like his necklace but it was like a cheap knockoff and it was like cheap you know what i mean like yeah he was, but he like made it sound like he was like selling his like his actual his jewelry. personal one yeah yeah so it was just like just influencers that like try to sell you something shitty just in general like whether if it's a course or whether if it's jewelry like yeah if, the, if, the, if if it's shitty if it's a shitty product it's just that degrades you as an influencer i think Cause yeah because you're putting your name behind your brand um that's one of the reasons i know i mean not in, I never had any merch or anything. Like people hit me up like, "How come you don't make merch? How come you don't make this?" One, I, I don't need to. Um, it would be cool, but I don't know. I felt like I don't need it. Like I'm doing this shit for fun, and yeah, I don't want to like. I think eventually I am gonna do it. Like I've I've thought of different ideas. One that I'm probably gonna do. I got a little more research, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start my own. Um, yeah. Beard oil. Oh, yeah. you should, bro. Like. Shit that I do, even, I like. Even, I'm a, I'm a even doing like an event, just talking about like beards and shit, like Coachella Valley Beard Club or some yeah. shit like that. I thought of a name, but I'm pretty sure it's taking like Desert Vikings. Desert Vikings. But then you know what? I want to market it for. Um, you know how a lot of like narcos and shit have like beards, like oh, Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing like I don't know, like some kind of like El Chapo fucking beard oils and shit, or like make it make a beard oil named El Chapo or something like that. Oh, yeah. By different, uh, different like, I don't know. I gotta do something that's not too, too crazy, but kind of tailored it towards like the community that we have here. Because yeah. I know a lot of Mexicans with beards, you know, and we have a lot of Mexicans. Yeah, we're here. hairy people. <laughs> <laughs> so that'd be, I think that'd be a kind of cool. Um, you know, if we don't have do. hair up here, we either, you know, yeah. gravity. What did it say? What's his name? <laughs> gravity? <laughs> Grammy yesterday. Uh, shout out to Kermit Clothing again. Um, my boy Christian. He said. Uh, Cause like he had nice freaking curly hair and I yeah. used to have curly hair in, back in like high school. So he, uh, he's like, Oh shit, gravity, bro. It went from here to here. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of that one, but that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, yeah, there's a, it's a lot of good stuff you could do with marketing with branding. Like you could do brand deals with like affiliate marketing, like the sofa thing I was trying to do yeah. with the other video and, uh, definitely shirts. I feel like sh everybody makes shirts though. That's why it's like, I don't know. I think it's like it's too, too played much. out. It's too much. Like, because people shirt, people will buy and support, and it's great. And people love free shirts or like to just buy support you. People are gonna buy if people support you, they'll buy you whatever. Yeah, as long as you're not, you know, exploiting them for like thousands and thousands of dollars. I think like if you're just trying to like get your brand out, brand out. That's I mean, making a shirt is okay, but if you're trying to like be more creative with it more like original with it like if you're trying to be like taking more of the entrepreneur route yeah you want to create something original or like something different um the influencers that i look up to are like people like alpha m teaching men's fashion jose is mm -hmm. yeah because they actually went out their own way creating like skin, like uh aaron marino he actually like made his own like skincare uh system that's like because uh like like I started like using like a skincare regimen, like taking mm -hmm. care of my face, like a cleanser, moisturizer, exfoliator, all for twenty five bucks, right? He actually like went out of his way and did some shit, some shit like that. Something that like he took something that was feminine, and made it masculine, like because there's it. no one doing it for the yeah, but for he, the men. but he simplified it because there's like you walk to Walgreens and you see like what the fuck, like bro, all this shit one. Is like cleansing and all that shit. It's too expensive. But this yeah. guy, he made it like very simple, simple. And even like when you buy it, you open it up, you get a card and like it tells you what to do, but it's simple. It's like you like get these tubes, put a, this much here. Like the card tells you what to do. Yeah. And like you have better skin. That's and dope. Yeah. Just uh, even Sammy hit me up. He's like, like I told him about it, and so I don't know if he's using it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but get, does he have affiliate links where you should start using? I should, I should. So oh. affiliate links works if you do products that you use. So yeah. I'm pretty sure they do because if they're digital, everybody wants to do those discount codes. Yeah. So yeah, anything you use that you could be using for your YouTube channel or your social media, be like, oh, got this. Uh, like the same thing you were doing with Sixth Street. 
We should get an affiliate name with Six Street. You know what? We gotta hit up my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Give him too much, uh, too much Come love on, on this Steve. podcast. Steve, <laughs> hit, hit us up, Steve. Steve, yeah. We know, we know where we you. We need an affiliate link for Six Street Coffee. Yeah. Everbloom too. Shout out and Amigos Coffee. And Amigos. We gotta hit up Amigos. They're Amigos, like is right next to our door, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, is that disrespectful? <laughs> Shout out Amigos Coffee, bro. Amigos Coffee, Got the, the next shirt. coffee shop. Damn, bro. People are going to be watching this podcast be like, these caffeine heads. I don't know if you can see Café it. del Corazón. Café del Corazón. The Amigos logo. I don't know if they can see it on the... on the. Oh, if you're watching this, you just... I mean, if you're listening to this, I was just showing my shirt that says Amigos Coffee on the front. Yeah. <laughs> it's a dope shirt, by the way. You guys should... Yeah, Amigos check Coffee. Out. Check it out here at the Indie Food Park. They were one of our sponsors for the podcast. Um, yeah, bro, this, um, on a, I don't know what we're talking about, influencers and shit. Just but influencers, <laughs> just the worst kind. The worst kind of influencers. Yeah, the, that's like the, the thing I don't like. But now let's talk about um, one thing I was, uh, the baby. The baby. Yeah. kicked out. Or so the baby today, there was an announcement, Lollapalooza. He was supposed to perf- So Okay, mm-hmm. so let me take it back. So the baby, he made some homophobic comments at Rolling Loud, uh, Miami last week. And when he got the shoe thrown at him? Yeah, they threw a shoe and a water bottle. He made some homophobic jokes. He basically said, like, <laughs> like dudes be sucking dick in the parking lot. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I forgot exactly <laughs> what he said, but he said some shit like that. And um, and he also said, like, he basically threw shit at the, that everybody that's gay has, like, HIV and oh, um, all kinds of stuff. Like, he just offended people with hiv yeah. he, he offended like the lgbtq community so he was supposed to perform a Lollapalooza today in chicago which is like another big summer festival yeah and then this morning Lollapalooza said um i have the the picture here on twitter they're like Lollapalooza was founded on diversity in- inclusivity respect and love with that in mind the baby will no longer be performing at grand park tonight young thug's performance will now take place at 9 p.m on the Bud Light Seltzer stage, and G Herbo will be performing at 4 p.m. on the T-Mobile stage. So, anyway, they basically um, they just blacklisted them. They blacklisted them. They they one because he tweeted. So this that happened last week in a Rolling Loud, and yeah. this week he started tweeting. Um, he said, "The baby tweeted this. Anybody who's done, <laughs> anybody who done ever been affected by AIDS, HIV, y'all got the right to be upset. What I said wasn't sensitive, even though I." I have no intentions on offending anybody, so my apologies. But the LGBT community, I ain't tripping on y'all. Do you? Y'all business is y'all business. So basically, he he was like, it's like a half-ass apology. Yeah. Because he's like, but the LGBT community. So basically, he didn't take back anything he said that offended a bunch of people. Because people say things all the time. Like, yeah. I've said a lot of bad stuff on Twitter. I've Everybody, everybody dude, does. everybody has said. But is the intention and if you fuck up because of ignorance because sometimes we don't grow up like knowing what's right and what's wrong until you kind of learn yeah and if you fuck up i apologize you know be like oh fuck my bad i I, i'm i don't know if you really meant it but whatever he didn't apologize and people got even more mad and that's why Lollapalooza canceled him i i I understand that but i to be honest bro like i i don't take me personally i don't take what rappers say per like like seriously seriously because one they're rappers bro like <laughs> like hey yo what's up man you know saying you know uh, I'm, well, that's, not, that's my that's my impersonation of like modern rappers but but i'm just saying like if you're if you're taking like people that rap about certain things and like just the way they act you know flamboyant or mm-hmm. you know just they're they're living you know some sort of lifestyle like you really think they're gonna be making educated you comments know, comments like what? like they're yeah out here spending so, well that's what it is so people weren't yeah people were mad at the comments yeah. but people were more mad that he didn't apologize he, like you didn't apologize you could apologize or you know like oh i'm i'm finding ways to learn about this or yeah now i understand why this is offensive things like that because we all like i said it's just we're pretty much ignorant until we learn on our own experiences um, it's not an excuse for him, but he should have apologized, yeah. you know. And so he doubled down, and a lot of Palooza kicked him out. And I don't know how this affects his career moving forward. Um, other music festivals, is he's got them coming up. 
I think they're going to try to kick him out unless he apologizes. I feel like this is going to force him, whether he wants to or not, because I'm pretty sure he's trying to double down. Like, he thinks he's, like, a gangster. He doesn't want to, like, yeah. fucking double or apologize. But his, his like, agent or his marketing team is going to have to, like, his talk, manager. talk to him. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're going to come out with a statement because there's no way. that He's going to be losing millions. He's going to be losing money for sure. Uh, honestly, it's probably not a smart move to do again. But, like, what do you expect? You know, from a guy, just, <laughs> come on, man. I mean, I don't. I mean, miss, he, he his music's pretty trash too. I, I mean, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he does make the song. Every song he has is the same song over and over again, bro. Like, he doesn't make anything original. But yeah, the baby, like I said, um, for sure, man. If he's trying to like live long and have like long, longevity in his career, he's gonna have to make smarter decisions for sure, and not, not. Uh, hurt his brand in any way so not apologizing is gonna hurt his brand for sure um he's he has no choice like like what you said if he's if he wants to you know get more fan base and uh get, attract more he people. said he also tweeted something now saying um that he's he only wanted to rap because he, he made like two or three tweets he, one of his tweets said, was saying uh i only wanted to be a rapper for one more year anyway because i'm gonna become an icon icon that's what he said but like how so i'm the, the way i think of an icon you're thinking of somebody that transcends the music career so like michael jackson he's yeah. more than the music um beyonce that's like an icon you have uh kanye like they're doing things beyond rap you know their yeah. clothing brand shoe brand all that stuff right so that's what he, that he said he wanted to become an icon next year like he thinks he's at that level and maybe this negative controversy is going to help him moving forward. But I, I think it's stupid. Like, he's, like, killing his own brand right now. That's, uh, I mean, he's going to, I mean, if he can find a way to pivot, maybe. Maybe. But it's just the way how things are going. How the culture However, there is a thing. Uh, easy. Bad publicity is good publicity. Yeah. Even though it's super negative, people are talking about him or learning about him. Because people who didn't know who the baby was, just because of the controversy, probably want to see the clip. Yeah. Oh, was this clip? Oh, now I know what he looks like. Oh, yeah. he's the one that sings that song. Oh, okay, cool. Let's cancel that guy. But no one's really cancelable because um Kanye, like a lot of people tried to cancel Kanye last year. No, not maybe two years ago when he was supporting uh, Trump. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> oh, MAGA Kanye, whatever, you know, yeah. like people were just hating on this dude, uh for, his for wearing the hat. For wearing the hat and saying like ignorant comments or whatever. But he but or even like that racism stuff that he did like in TMZ, how like racism was a choice. Yeah, slavery was a choice. Slavery was a yeah, choice, slavery. and he started wearing the red hat, so people started like canceling this guy. But at the same time, they didn't because he already had established his brand. So I think the biggest difference is that Kanye already had a legendary brand, like amazing albums, like critically acclaimed. He already had his Yeezy. Like even line. if you wanted like to, it's kind of like it's kind of like you don't. It's like uh, like you don't fuck with Kanye, but you fuck with his music. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's like, that's why I did it too. Even though you were hating on it on him, you were still wearing his shoes, or you were like yeah, still listening exactly. to his songs because they're that good. Because he's know? that good and he's that talented, and he literally paved the way for like Kid Cudi and uh, Travis Scott, like all these. Dudes. He he put everybody on, you know, and like his music's just so legendary. His beats, like. His some sound. the best producer him and dr dre the best producers ever so yeah this guy um speaking of kanye right now there was a report last week so we talked about in the last podcast he did the whole performance releasing donda. That, playing the playing the album donda at mercedes-benz stadium so in typical kanye fashion he didn't finish the album and he was reportedly rented out a room at the stadium to finish the album like he stayed at the mercedes-benz stadium that's crazy <laughs> that is crazy but honestly that's how you know kanye is on his kanye shit um he's obsessed he's obsessed i mean that i think that's the best kanye like you know now that he's like doing all that stuff i i i have high hopes for this album because whatever he's doing i hope that you know he's putting his focus he literally rented out and he's like not leaving until the album's done so he's putting his all his energy and his time. He probably like wakes up like his bed is probably like in front of his studio or something. So like he that. he just had a they had a picture of um 
they had a picture of Kanye. I saw it on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, where he was, he just had a bed. It looked like a locker room, maybe for for who plays there. I think the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, yeah. it's not it's somewhere in Atlanta. Yeah, so he, this fool. Um, <laughs> I think they. He, I think he walked out of a soccer game or something like that too. Yeah, there was a soccer game. He walked out right here. That's they posted this picture. It's just like so for those listening. So there's a picture. There's a bed. There's like a little tiny locker, and there's like some computer and some clothes and some Yeezy sh- shoes on the floor, and there's like a, a tiny TV. So it's not even a full studio. Like this would just rent it out. Like uh, just like a little. <laughs> just like, like <laughs> he just rent it out. Just like a a regular locker room. But anyway, like that's pretty crazy. Some people are saying it's like Phantom of the Opera. Have you ever seen that Phantom of the Opera? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that yeah. fool lives in the in the was, opera house and like yeah. talks to to Christine, the or Christy, whatever the, yeah. the main protagonist. So this is like on some Phantom of the Opera shit. And then he walked down the soccer stadium wearing that mask because yeah. he's back with wearing that mask. So this album's gonna be certified classic for sure. <laughs> um, he said that the release date is August eighth. Do you believe? Um, do you believe Connie's gonna drop Donda on time? I want to say yes, but at the at the same time, I I'm pretty sure he's gonna do it later. I think uh, I want to say yes too, but he's always had delays. Like Life of Paula was like two months late because he kept changing it. Yeah. Even after the album was released, um, Life of Pablo was one of the first albums, if not the first, to be digitally altered after it was released. So he dropped like the album. It, it was on streaming. Yeah. And he ended up changing like one or two songs. Like he added like and t- took stuff out and added some stuff uh, to the songs okay. and and replaced them. The ones that were already out like streaming. That's crazy. So he he um he's like a pioneer. You know, like he was one of the first ones to drop an album digitally, like yeah. exclusively. Oh. Wow. And Connie's like always been kind of ahead of the game like that. Yeah, I mean honestly, the he just whatever feels right to him. I mean, he's the one that's coming, making this music. He's the one. I hope he goes on tour, bro. I'll, I'll be going for that he tour. He has to. He I'm taking you to. to that fucking tour, he has bro. To, that bro. shit's fucking. We'll be filming fire. that shit. Yeah, like that shit's gonna be fire. I've been, I've seen Kanye live a, a bunch of times. I've seen him probably like seven times live. <laughs> Dude, we had, going to a Kanye concert would be dope, especially for if this, if this album, I, because I haven't listened to the album. Um, at all. I listened to uh, I didn't listen to the whole thing because I was late on the stream. Yeah, but I I told myself I don't want to. Yeah, because I want to listen to it for the first time with high quality with like headphones. Headphones. Probably like these headphones connected. You gotta do a reaction to that. Yeah, thing. we'll do a reaction. So I listened to a couple on the stream, but I don't know for some reason I like to listen to it for the first time like yeah. in the zone. We'll do it here with like we'll put the lights with like fucking crazy lighting and shit. Yeah. <laughs> We'll do a, a live reaction. I did see the only thing I did see from that whole Donda listening was him getting on his knees when he played. Um, it was like a clip. It was like a song where like uh, about like the, his divorce with Kim. Yeah, how he's like losing his family or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I know. That's that's. I always wonder how Kim felt being there because she was on the. She was there when he was performing because of the kids. Yeah. So well, Kanye, did, did uh, Kim did file divorce on Kanye or was it? Yeah, Kim did. Oh, really? Yeah. So she filed a divorce because I think it's one. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to like don't, the, the real reason why Kim divorced Kanye was because of the brand. They, she needs more controversy because she's getting older and she needs to just be in the headlines, bro. And one, how are you going to go into You're going to fade from the spotlight like you're gonna be mother of four even though she's still a big brand she's gonna be behind kanye's shadow and she's gonna have four kids so now you divorce now you're on the headlines creates more controversy for the show now once the show blows up whatever then she starts dating people there's gonna be headlines from tmz oh kim spotted dating this fucking other rapper or this other nba player and then because her whole brand is attention no i know i know that but it's just honestly i think kim is gonna like She's gonna like uh, age like spoiled milk, just because of all the surgeries. Well, no shit. (laughs) Well, that's why. So the only way, once you lose your youth, the only way to say relevance, controversy, and like rating. So she's gonna once she starts dating people, boom, headlines. Boom. Once she gets married again, boom, headlines. And she's always gonna keep staying on the headlines because of those reasons. And when she's got the attention, she's gonna be able to make money off her brand. I mean. I could see that. Yeah, she'll probably make her money. That's what the Kardashians are. It's just all 
controversy. It's all controversy That's and headlines. That's how her career was, bro. That's how she started in this game. Yeah. I mean, if you're an OG, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. She's a... Uh, well, and her and her whole family, it's all just headlines and uh, just... They literally changed the culture of, like, how women want to look, bro. Like, she everywhere you see on... She was a pioneer. She... Oh, yeah. Well, she's she's no not, the the no, real no. no the real the real pioneer was um, the mom bro she's a fucking mastermind yeah but uh i would say kim kardashian is definitely like the pioneer when it comes to like altering like making it cool to get alter, surgery young yeah get because i mean it makes no sense man i mean me personally i don't mess with that i don't promote it i don't i mean i'm not for it to be honest but well, it's all over Instagram now, bro. All the girls want to look like the Kardashian. And they do already. They all fucking get the same surgery. They all get the same fucking butt lifts. They all get the same, like, face fucking reconstruction. Like, it's crazy, bro. Like, so many girls look it, like the Kardashians. Just, it's just unhealthy, man. It's an mm-hmm. unhe- It creates an unhealthy, like... Man- well, one, it's, like, people. But two, it's mental. How many girls are messed up because they don't look like the pictures that... One, they already get, like, thousands of dollars of surgery. Number two... They get edited. They have professional editing and fucking Photoshop. So anything you see on Instagram has been edited. It's been fucking, you know, like certain angles that the photographers yeah. get. And it's all fake. And like girls, like little girls and shit like growing up and they're fucking they look up to suicidal and their negative thoughts because they don't they don't look like that. But nobody looks like that because it's all fake. Yeah, it's just it just creates this unhealthy uh, expectations. Ecosystems. I don't know. It's just artificial, but it's not reality, though. Cause yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we all age. You can't be time. So yeah, Father Time's undefeated unless we get like unlimited life. Would you ever be down to if they could guarantee a hundred percent? Like let's say mm. seventy years from now when you're older, if they could guarantee that they could transfer your consciousness into another body, would you be down to live in like your consciousness live in a robot? That's crazy. I mean, living in a robot, you'll be indestructible. Oh. But is it going to be you because it copied all your thoughts into this other physical robot? But is it you? That's crazy. Because, I mean, I think everybody has, like, a different sides to them. Like, what if I had thoughts? Because when you say thoughts, are they good thoughts or are they bad thoughts? I think just a carbon copy of yourself. So whatever you always think, the where all your memories, everything will be transferred over. But you're still alive and the robot's there, but then you end up, maybe you pass away soon. Like you're on your deathbed, you're like, yeah, fucking oh, turn on the robot. So you're going to live forever, Yeah. but it's not going to be you because your conscience, you know, is it you or is it not you? You know what I mean? Like That's crazy. That's crazy to think because if it's your conscience, like that's like in, in the body man of the, like the robot, then, I mean, then it would be you. But if it's not, then like you're not really... You're not really like alive. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's like hard. That, that's kind of hard. That's kind of hard to say because I, I mean you're that's like having a kid because you don't know like what that robot ended up being like. like yeah, you know what I mean. So, but honestly, if I nah, you wouldn't I, do it. I, I wouldn't do it just because. I mean, I did what I did. Like everything I set out to do, I'll probably do. Um. Like, honestly, I, I wouldn't want to live to, like, see the rest of the bullshit that goes on. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, we'll, we'll be in Mars and colonizing the moon, bro, in like time in the last podcast. <laughs> yeah, but imagine all the bullshit that probably goes on on Earth. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to have water, water, water wars. Water wars. That's hard to say. Water wars. Yeah, we're going to have water wars because there's going to be, like, a shortage. Like, we're running out of fresh water. Unless we find a way to desalinate the ocean. Like, I just don't get how we're yeah. not fucking desalinating the ocean, bro. That, so that stupid. makes no sense, bro. Like, this. We're surrounded by water here in California. For sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, we're around, like, we live in, right next to the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. So, why can't we just desal? Yeah. Yeah, or use it. Like, what kind of. That's what I'm saying. Like, we're using the resources to go to Mars and to go to the moon and shit instead of creating, like, giant fucking mega giant desalination plants to fucking provide fresh water for all the drought areas and one the united states is not as bad as the rest of the world but like africa and all these places that have like extreme drought where people have to walk miles in order to get like yeah water bro like that's fucked up yeah bro i mean we take it for granted yeah 
for sure. But I mean, it is what it is. But for sure, we we definitely got to be on that. We're gonna. I'm telling you, so we're gonna have wars in the future, fought over water, like fucking lack of resources. People are gonna be fighting. I think South Africa, ex like they they dried up like a river in certain parts of South Africa, and they nice. they had like. They only allowed to shower like twice a week and shift for like certain periods of That's time. Crazy, because they run out of water. There's, you can't even shower. Like they got to the extreme. And um, here in California, I mean, we're using water from I think the Colorado River because there's nothing here left. So yeah. that's just gonna dry out eventually. I heard something about like their um, something about like uh, lithium. Some company or some they're gonna be doing something out like in the Salton Sea. Like they're gonna be like mining for lithium or something like that. Like oh, you, you mentioned that before, yeah. Mining some metals, um, like for I don't know for what company. I think it was like Ford, some car company, uh, mining the Salton Sea. I don't know how I feel about that because I mean, when it comes to lithium mining and stuff like that, it's usually like a very polluting process. Yeah, and I mean. With the area, I mean, there's with the local area and community and stuff like that. It, it it wouldn't be good. It would be doing more harm than good. I think. Yeah. Well, there's there's. I really don't see a solution to saving the Salton Sea. I know they've been trying to do like multi million dollar projects, and I know that right now they're kind of talking about it again, like because we can let it dry up. One, it's gonna create a dust bowl. So yeah. a lot of the wind dies out because of the, the water. So if you just have an empty vacuum. It happened somewhere in Northern California where this lake dried out and then yeah. no one ever thought about it. Like it happened like 50 years ago. They dried out this lake and after the, the lake was gone, all the neighboring like cities, they became inhabitable because of the entire, the winds would come in with like, just pick up all the freaking Dust. sand, yeah. the sand and shit. And it just like wreak havoc, like it's it's crazy. So they're saying that could be here in the valley, like it could ruin the whole valley if the Salton Sea would be a freaking. Um, I think we just gotta try. do something. It's been just talked about it, talked about too much to the point where it's we gotta like proceed to do something with it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but um. Anyway, can we talk about something that you had uh you wanted to talk about oh, today? Yeah, good. Ray White. <laughs> Uh, or bad news. Bad um, news. So what happened? What happened with that? Why did he get released? From so, the a poor, uh, a there's been a lot of speculation. Um, one from like Wrestling Insider reported saying something like they reported Bray Wyatt. A lot of people said a bunch of things. One, it was for medical reasons. He was just getting cleared. Yeah. Um, and WWE released him because of budget cuts, but. To me, that made no sense because he he's was a actually, big name. He was a big name, and he was like, no, like one of the top wrestlers in merchandise sales. So, so to me, that made no sense. Yeah. Um, Mills told me they released him because of the stuff. Uh, bro, uh, wrestler died. Uh, uh, not too long ago, by the name of Brody Brody Lee. Uh, he was part of the Wyatt family. Luke Harper. Yeah. He passed away. Oh, Luke Harper passed away. Fuck. Yeah, he passed away. Um, and so he was very close with Luke Harper. Um, and he like after WrestleMania, he like had some time to, he needed some time to like recoup, but to me, like, I think it was just him and another report said he was just frustrated with the creative team at WWE. Like, yeah. They really sucked. Like, and, and I could see that. I could see that, that he got frustrated with the creative team because personally, I didn't like what they did. With, what like, what the they whole, do to him. And last time I saw of him. He was like playing like it was during the pandemic and was he fighting John Cena or something and then or no, Roman he, Reigns or somebody he was doing like like mind games where he was like in a house and he'll be like he'll come out on the screen like at some house doing some crazy shit like that's the last time I remember. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. He he wrestled uh John Cena in one WrestleMania like during the pandemic, but um they just dropped the ball like they included this other wrestler her, her name was Alexa Bliss but they like she's now the fiend in some sort of way like she's like possessed or something she's possessed by like the fear, fiend spirit or something like that she has like she's basically she got took away but the thing is the one thing that they messed up with the fiend is they kind of like made him because the fiend was always supposed to be like undefeated right yeah and then i forgot who beat him for the title but i think it was like 
think he lost the title to Goldberg or something like that. Okay. And yeah, like they just ruined him after like that. And then they just made it too complicated. And now they just dropped the ball. You literally like there was a report saying that like uh, when they were doing the um, when they were getting their creative writers onto um, their writing team and stuff like that. Literally, the creative writer that got the job said she knows nothing about wrestling. Can you believe that shit? And she she's she's a writer for like com- comedy and film and whatever, but she doesn't understand rest like wrestling. And like that's the thing that gets me about like WWE is that they hire people that don't know the product, no don't know yeah, the just because they're good at marketing. Or just because they're a writer like for some movie, like bro. You got to get people like me or Mills or something. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying because we actually know. Or, like, get, even getting, like, fans, bro. Because, like, I'd be watching some of these, like, I'd be watching some, some like. Uh, How to fix, like, certain wrestlers like, and shit. Or, yeah, just, like, um, kind of, like, you predicting your, like, your virtual, like, um, like the fantasy, way the, fantasy, like, fantasy booking and stuff like that. The way like, the roster should play out. Or yeah, that. like. Or, like, how would you book this match? Or, like, Steam mm. versus Triple H. How would you book that? And yeah. Then, you know, stuff like that. The whole that. Goldberg thing is, like, because he's part-time. And, like, there's Brock Lesnar and He's Goldberg. old. He's <laughs> old, bro. He's old. Nobody. Look, I don't care how jacked up he is as an old man. That shit worked in WCW and, you know, from uh, ever since he stopped wrestling. Like, when he was in his prime. He wrestled The Undertaker in Saudi Arabia. That shit was terrible. Like, I don't know if you saw the like um, Undertaker documentary, but... No, I didn't see it. He wrestled... Uh, so, WWE do, does, like, these shows, like, in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Uh, obviously, saw, saw obviously that, yeah. for, like, money and stuff like that. But, like, one of the big matches on the card was Goldberg versus The Undertaker. And they're both old. Yeah. They're both old. They're, you know... I mean, Undertaker, I could understand, but just, man, it's just the match was just too terrible. Goldberg match, like, obviously, it's a Goldberg match, so it doesn't really, you know, it's not a long match, but he ended up botching a maneuver. Wow. Um, yeah, well, yeah, because, well, the Undertaker is, like, very tall, so I think he was going for a jackhammer, but he couldn't get it, so he, like, ended up, like, getting it midway and, like, falling so it was just, it was just a terrible match, and honestly, it was just a disappointment. Just awkward. <laughs> it was just awkward to see because you see like these two old men like in their fifty, like mid fifties or I think older. I don't know. And there should be a cap on like when wrestlers should retire because Ric Flair wrestled for forever too. Like him, like he would still be part of like those Evolution matches. Like that was like seventy years old, bro, or sixty some. Sixty, <laughs> and he'll be doing. It. But he has good uh, stage presence though, because he doesn't. He's never relied on physical. So that's a problem with like people like Goldberg who rely their whole careers on on their prime physical strength, versus somebody who's more technical but and Goldberg more. Goldberg was never known for like. He was never known for his mic skills or. Stage no, that's presence. what I mean. Yeah. That's what I said. He's only known for physical. Versus Ric Flair, who's known for great on the mic. He's the dirtiest player in the game. He's going to yeah. cheat his way in the match. And that translates to an old man who's like, you could tell that he's not physically there, but he has all the like old school tricks to win matches oh, yeah. and like get in your head and shit. See, like that is different from that. That's respectable because that that's actually part of the business and that creates longevity. Yeah. You know, the, being skillful. He, the, the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, um, he came back and he's work doing a lot of work, uh, like all that stuff, like just money, like him, yeah. like his iconic laugh and just him fucking around with some of the wrestlers. It's, it's cool. Like that's, that's how you create longevity. And even Chris Jericho too, like he doesn't yeah. need to wrestle. Dude, just him being on commentary works. Um, but speaking of AEW, AEW is going to come out with uh, their new show, AEW Rampage, um, which is basically, I say, it's their SmackDown. Yeah. Because they have their main show, which is AEW Dynamite, which airs on, I believe, every Wednesday. Rampage, I don't know when it's going to air, but I know it's the first show is going to be in Chicago, Illinois. And if you guys know anything about wrestling... And Chicago, Illinois, you guys know that Chicago, Illinois is the place to have, it's the loudest crowd, it's 
one of the best crowds, one of the best places to have, you know, a wrestling show. Yeah. Because it's just, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a big city and it's yeah, big, big history there for big wrestling. history for wrestling money in the bank, 2011. And speaking of Chicago, you can't talk about Chicago and wrestling without talking about CM Punk. So let's get into it. So the big news is that CM Punk is signing, uh, signing with AEW and the way that I know this is uh, there's a lot of... So, one, it just makes sense. It makes sense because they're having their show in AEW. And, and ever since AEW came, like, started out as a promotion, ever since uh, AEW started out as a promotion, there's always been speculation that, oh, CM Punk might come out here. He might show up to AEW, one, because AEW has creative freedom which WWE does not have. Yeah. And two, it's it just the the creatives and a lot of the EVPs um, who are wrestlers, they have a lot of connections to, you know, CM Punk and a lot of the wrestlers and a lot of the venues and stuff like that. So if Punk wanted to wrestle part-time, they could make it happen. And honestly, it just makes sense. I mean, he would have the creative freedom, he would have a good roster of talent to work with and he could wrestle in Japan. He could wrestle in other promotions. And that's one of the cool things about AEW is that they're working with a lot of cross promote. They're cross promoting. So they often like their main guy, um, Kenny Omega, he's the world champion of AEW, but he's also the main champion of another promotion. And on top of that, he's, he uh, has a belt in Mexico. So that's cool. Is like you get all these wrestlers from different promotions wrestling on different shows and it creates more exposure Yeah, and they're building up more, you know, uh, cards shows. It just, it's a win win for everybody because you have your draw, you're drawing ratings. You like, Oh, I may like this wrestler from this show. So like you add in CM Punk from the mix, like maybe he may not want to wrestle just here exclusively, Maybe he one of he wants to wrestle in Japan where it's a lot more different. Yeah, he wants to diverse his brand into that market. He can. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity, and it's just, dude, the pop, the pop of the crowd. Just like you just hear that song because I mean, yeah, because he, he retired. I remember I was still watching wrestling back then. Yeah, so he was like the top of the game, bro. Like he had like you said he was outselling John Cena. When John Cena had been the face of the whole WWE for yeah. years, and he basically got kicked out by Vince, and of course he gave out the amazing rant because he wanted to leave as a champion, and um, he tried the UFC stuff, and I even watched his matches too because yeah. I was like, oh, CM Punk, I gotta yeah. watch it. So he kind of sucked as a UFC fighter. <laughs> so I think this comeback could be great one for him to come back and because he was such a high level i think the ufc kind of well him not wrestling and then the ufc kind of failure kind of dropped his like status a little bit but yeah. him coming back to wrestling and a, a competitor to the wwe which that would be insane like so many fans would just watch just for him like i know that's gonna like put a, AEW on the map for sure bro. for sure and dude i mean a lot of a lot of the stuff that AEW is just coming out with it's it's dope it's definitely dope it's not for everybody i will say um but for sure, like the amount of casual fans that like wrestling lost, like you add in, like even yourself, right? Yeah. Take yourself, you stop, you stop watching wrestling, but just you see CM, somebody like CM Punk showing up, you might watch AEW more, more times just to see CM Punk. And that's the ratings just go up from there. Yeah. Like it's definitely how, how are the ratings for AEW right now? They to have been really good actually um for the past fans whole are already pandemic. liking them yeah um all their shows bro they end up selling out um there's not they have a good turnout rate they've been beating nxt um they've been beating for sure they there's they brag about that's the one thing uh they brag about their ratings and they always compare themselves to wwe which is funny because um the owner tony khan he uh the chairman he uh, he always like bashes on Twitter <laughs> like WWE and Chris Jericho. He calls himself the dem uh, the demo god, which is like 
they they always brag about the ratings and shit like that. So it's just funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's just funny to see. How is that like wrestling community online? Ah, uh, it's very diverse, bro. Wrestling. Do they like AEW? They or no? So it's because that's up to the fans. It's up to the fans. Yeah. Um, that's the one thing, bro, about wrestling is it's the fan like. The fans are great, but they're also bad. Like they're terrible. Like there's there's different kinds of fans, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll, it's just it's too diverse to be honest. Like the the fan base is a little diverse. I will say there's fans like me that just have an appreciation for wrestling and they mess with anything, right? Mm. And then there's fans that are very picky. Like they they're like, oh, they they have they they can't get their heads out of like the nostalgia of how it, like things used to be, and they they like. They rather watch like things from the past, but not appreciate things like how they are. They're now. happening now, yeah. Um, but like overall, like overall online, the discussion about AEW, do they think it's compared? Would they rather watch it over WWE, like, or do um, people consume both? Like, I, people, I, don't know. I mean, people consume both, but for the most part, there's pe- there's that's what I say. It's it's hard for me to say because it's not. There's people there. There's wrestling fans that just consume AEW, and there's fans that just consume WWE, because um, it, it, it there's a lot of wrestling. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of wrestling, so sometimes it's hard to keep up. Um, sometimes uh, there's wrestling fans like the honestly <laughs> with wrestling fans, they just they argue all the time too. Like, what's the better promotion, and all that stuff. Um, what's the better who's the better wrestler and oh like you're an AEW mark you can't like like you say something bad about their favorite wrestler or the favorite or the promotion or whatever and all of a sudden they just attack you yeah like it's it, it's crazy it's, <laughs> it, 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 get, it could get a little toxic at times so who's who's like the top now because i haven't watched WWE in a while so who, who are the top guys right now Roman Reigns for sure. Roman Reigns, the top dog. Yeah, he's the top guy right well, now. But he's fighting John Cena right now, no? He's set to wrestle John Cena. Because I saw the return of John Cena and the pop that he got, like people just went crazy. But yeah, dude. I mean, John Cena hasn't wrestled in probably like, like in a year, I would say. Yeah. A year and a half, maybe. But he took all that time to like film his stuff with, you know, all those commercials, media stuff, filming for the movies. I mean, John Cena has been busy, but it, I don't know. It was weird seeing John like John Cena not wrestle. It's just seeing him in the movies all the time. Yeah, it's it, whenever I see The Rock, it's hard for me to like picture The Rock not as the wrestler. And I mean, that's probably for me. No, I, you see you see The Rock more as like a as when a I see the actor. The Rock now, I see him as an actor now. Yeah, for the first ten years of his acting career, of course, all oh, the wrestler. But now, like. I don't see him as like I just see him as the rock. Like I don't see him as Well maybe like, like not like as a movie star, but as as a brand. As a brand. I yeah. see his brand like oh as a rock. Oh the rock's oh he's wrestling right now. Oh he's making a movie. Oh he's in this TV show. Oh he's working I out. I think it's just But a, I see him as his an individual. Like yeah. I think he's just beyond wrestling or movies. He's just an icon. There you go. He's an yeah. icon. <laughs> not I, the I, baby will never be that. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, that's funny. Uh John Cena I think John Cena just hasn't been in, in that the Hollywood the industry game too for too long. Because I mean, John Cena, you you think of John Cena, you think about the memes, right? Him is for sure wrestling. You it, can't it's see for me. Sure wrestling. Oh, you can't see that fool. But <laughs> there's this one discussion about how John Cena is the last icon of wrestling. Because you have your icon, your wrestling icons like you know Hulk Hogan, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, like wrestlers yeah, r- that r- just Undertaker. have that Undertaker. Like of the modern era, though. Yeah. Like of the modern era, like he's the last one who has like that superstar yeah. power. I want to say. I know Vince and when they were coming up, Vince wanted a uh, Brock Lesnar and uh, Randy Orton to be the head, the head. But the John Cena came out of nowhere and just fucking captivated. John audiences. Cena for sure because of all his like uh, charitable stuff that he does with like. No, the, well, he blew up so much. I think he blew up more than Vince expected. Like John Cena just became such a global hit. Yeah, for sure. Bigger than Hulk Hogan, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh, Hulk. Hulk Hogan kind of sucked as a wrestler, bro. That fool was trash. He was, well, well, during his time, he was great, but that fool kind of sucked. And he's racist, so fuck that <laughs> He's <one>. racist. <laughs> yeah. John Cena Dude, all day. John Cena. John Cena. I, I always prefer John Cena over 
Um, he was just so marketable, man. The guy. So what's Roman Reigns like? How's Roman Reigns? Roman Reigns. Uh, Roman's Re- Roman Reigns. First of all, great my skills. He's because back then when Roman Reigns like was with the Shield, I was watching a lot of the Shield stuff. You, you yeah. can just tell he wasn't like he, comfortable speaking. He, he was more stiff. Yeah, he was more stiff. But now it's just. He's more in the zone. He's more like laid back. He's the he's the tribal chief. So basically, the he's the uh, he's with the Usos now. He gathered his family lineage. Like he's like the head of the tribe. Basically, he's the champion. Nobody can touch him. Every time, like he speaks very like monotone, uh, not monotone, but very like slowly. And every time, like he tells the crowd, like acknowledge me, acknowledge me, and shit like that. Just, so <laughs> that's. So what you're saying is they they turn him into a heel? Yeah, he's heel. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I remember wrestling back in um, that's when I stopped watching twenty twenty what? So okay, 20? so I took a break. So I I stopped watching like around those times twenty thirteen during okay. CM Punk whatever. After CM Punk or during? Like around the time okay. of CM Punk, I did get to see because I was still kind of sometimes once in a while I would yeah, watch. Yeah. Then I took like a more maybe like a three or four year break. I didn't watch anything. I didn't know anything about NXT. And then I started watching because uh, the WWE Network, once the WWE Network came out. Oh, okay. Because it made it easier for fans because for the, so where I lived, I didn't have cable. Yeah. So I couldn't watch Raw, couldn't watch SmackDown, and I don't like watching, re- like, either I watch it live or I don't. Yeah. And I wasn't paying for pay-per-views because I thought, I'm not going to pay 60 bucks to watch fucking yeah. SummerSlam and shit. Yeah. But WWE Network is like, pay 10 bucks a month, and you get all the pay-per-views, and you get to all the classic watch, matches. Yeah. And you get the new NXT shit that's, like, the next upcoming thing. So yeah. I got into that because I was like, it's affordable. It's cool that they're trying new things, like, giving opportunity like to young Netflix wrestlers. For wrestling. Yeah, Netflix for wrestling with all the classic shit that you grew up with. So I, I fucking loved it. The only network I watched, like, um, old, old school WrestleMania. I would yeah. go watching certain matches that I didn't watch, like, because you had access to yeah. all of it, documentaries, and they even had the cartoon show with the wrestlers, oh, with yeah. the voiceovers and shit. <laughs> so I watched the, all kinds of stuff, um, and that's when The Shield was coming out. So I watched the NXT stuff, um, like when Finn Balor was in NXT, and then you had uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Then you had The Shield, like, they had just dominated. And um, they kept pushing Roman Reigns, so I, I watched all those like years where Roman Reigns was yeah. headlining Wrestle, or they were trying to make him headliner at WrestleMania. Yeah, but the crowd would boo him because they didn't want him. The crowd kept booing him after everything because they knew that he was only getting he pushed because of Vince. Yeah, people would rather have Seth Rollins, who was a great wrestler. They, yeah. they'd rather have Daniel Bryan. They didn't want Roman Reigns, and they were trying to put him as the baby, the baby face. The baby no, face, nobody liked yeah. him. Nobody liked him. And now that you're saying that they turn him into a heel, like that sounds amazing because that's something they should have done in the first place. They should have done it, but it took them like a long five years time. too late. <laughs> too late. I mean, well, it's but now it's working. Late. It's working now. Now it, it it's actually a good thing now because like what and I, I was a fan of him during those times where he was getting pushed because like his hair was fucking sick, like his all hair fucking was wet and shit, and like just a big old dude. And he played in the NFL, I think, for yeah, like, yeah, for the Vikings, uh, no, the Jaguars, no, 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 Jaguars. He was a fullback. Yeah, he was a. Uh, Florida, right? Yeah, he's uh, from Pensacola, Florida, or something like that. So yeah, probably. yeah, but um, for sure, uh, I like his look now. Cause back then, I was like, it's hard. Cause I um, he, does he uh, still wear that freaking bulletproof vest and shit or not? No, he took it off. Well, what does he wear now? He has just he um, he just re- same cargo pants, same glove, whatever. Just he doesn't have it on anymore. Oh, just shirtless? Just shirtless. Oh, but okay. he has a badass, like, tattoo. I saw it, like, the rocks, like, tribal tattoo, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, they're all Samoans, so it's, like, a Samoan yeah. tribal thing. But That's it's hard. cool. It's cool. Um, he has new theme music, too, so he doesn't have that shield bullshit. Like, he's coming to his own, and that's what, like, like now that he's healed, he's kind of cheered a little bit. But it's, like, that's what we needed this whole entire time. Because I, I, I guess one of the things about Roman is just he's never came to his own you know like he's always had the shield shit ever since like they the shield broke up so now it's like what like why are you still doing that yeah like why do you still have the vest you know like come to your own as like and he survived cancer too yeah he survived so that's, that's big they 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 cheered him for that too um because well, it was like an, an actual thing but after like he came back from like remission or like he came back from an injury or whatever and he attacked Bray Wyatt. 
Because that's that's when he came back. He attacked like Bray Wyatt and the Fiend and stuff like that. And that's where you see in the the shelf. Uh, that that's that's actually the shirt he wore. Wreck everyone. Oh, okay. that's that's actually when he came out. That's when he debuted and came back as the Tribal Chief. Um, and he won the Universal Championship. It was uh, yeah, that wreck everyone and leave. He came back like bigger. So right now he's just dominating. He's, he's the top dominating. of the game. So he's got a big match with John Cena at SummerSlam, or what is it? Yeah, SummerSlam. Um, later in August, huh? Later in August, like August 29th or eighth. That sounds um, pretty dope. Something like that. It's gonna be a big event, big match. I might, I might, I might watch that. I might get back into wrestling. Bro, it's a good time to be for me. Like man. to be honest, I don't. I'm not. I'm. Not, I'm not on dig uh, the AEW. I mean, I've never watched it. I've only watched clips that you send me on YouTube. Yeah. So I haven't watched the show, but like WWE, like for me that I don't have a lot of time to invest into, I'll be down to watch like big events like SummerSlam. Yeah. Definitely the Royal Rumble. I, I love watching the Royal Rumble because you get those badass wrestlers that come back just for the Royal Rumble. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the selling point, bro. It's just. You never know who's gonna come out, bro. We were me and my brother. We were watching WrestleMania, uh, two thousand uh, Royal Rumble two thousand eight when John Cena came back that one year. Yeah, um, and he beat Triple H. Like uh, he came out number thirty. Triple H was number twenty, twenty eight, twenty nine, something like that. And it was him, Batista, Triple H. Yeah, just think about it, bro. It's it's that star power, bro. It's 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 all marketing and uh, just star power. That's that's dope. No, it's uh, wrestling. Wrestling's always been fun, and I love Mills's response when someone says wrestling is fake. Because why you watch wrestling? Wrestling is fake. Yeah, it's staged, but movies are fake. We why are we watching movies? You know that the actors aren't really in danger. You know that the stakes is just a fucking movie, and you still watch it because it's entertainment. Bro, wrestling is like a movie, but live, like live, it's live performance. So it's it's an art. One you have to be they. They bust their ass to be in that top shape, be able to know the moves, the the chemistry they have in the ring. They have to be able to talk in the mic. They're traveling like two hundred freaking days out of the year yeah. performing. Like it's insane amount it's of a uh, work. At the it's end a of the lot day. of work. It's a lot of work. It's and a it's lot entertaining. Of, it's entertaining and like even the characters too, bro. Like you may not be a wrestling fan, but you damn sure know who Ric Flair is when you hear woo. You, yeah, come on. He's bro. even in rap songs now. R- Ric rap. Flair drip, bro. <laughs> Ric Flair drip, bro. Well, like, John Cena. Everybody knows John, John Cena. C- everybody knows The Rock. <laughs> everybody knows John Cena. But Stone Cold, like with the two beers. That's iconic, bro. Like that's, every. How many motherfuckers have done that shit when they're drinking? Fucking two beers, two even beers, it with waters, water, water soda, bro. Dude, that Triple H that. thing where they spit out the water. Hell yeah, like it's all iconic shit, bro. Jeff, even the, the Hardy Boys. Bro, you can't hear me. Yeah, all that shit, bro. Even the little Batista thing, the, yeah, with the fireworks, the Randy Orton RKO out of nowhere, like people do it in pools, like people the do it at memes, the lakes, dude. Yeah, <laughs> all that shit. I mean, or the Undertaker just being badass. So, now wrestling is dope. Um, it's definitely. I mean, wrestling has definitely lost its touch a little bit, but it's definitely coming back. I for sure because now they're adding more people, like Mike Tyson. Uh, Mike Tyson. Did some stuff and like an AEW. Shaq wrestled Cody Rhodes in AEW. Shaq? Yeah, Shaq. Shaq wasn't wrestling? Yeah. That's crazy. I know. Shaq has always wrestled. He wrestled the big show that one time at some Battle Royal in, Wrest- in WrestleMania or something. Yeah, like I think I remember. Yeah, it was crazy. For the Andre, uh, the Giant Memorial Battle Royal or something like that. Yeah, no, re- wrestling is dope. It definitely brings us back. So um, anyway, uh, any final thoughts before we end today's episode? I just want to say it's a good time to be a wrestling fan. It's a good time to be an Angel Chavez fan. It's a good time to be a Mills the God fan. It's a good time to be a Brian B. Filming or Brian Young Jamie fan. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, the, today uh, we got into, I don't know, I feel like we didn't touch on every topic we wanted to talk about, but we went on uh, some crazy tangents. So thank you guys for watching this podcast. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. If you guys are listening, give us a five-star rating. Uh, make sure you guys follow us We'll put the links in the description And uh, stay tuned Because we might be doing Two episodes a week So Stay tuned for that Thank you guys for watching